So uh, I've been working for now uh, two years and a half at Cyberdyne and I've designed this uh, multi-touch system, um, which is kind of the cream of the crop at the moment. Um, from the hardware point of view, uh, we have something that's much thinner than the competition. We have something that's much bigger. And um, because we use an LCD instead of classic retro projectors, um, the quality of the picture is much better. Then on top of that, uh, the system is very responsive, it's very fast, and so um, it's, a, it's a nice product. Um, I designed it basically alone, so I'm very proud of it, and uh, it was quite a lot of fun. So basically how it works is pretty simple. Um, we start with a black screen, which is also pretty simple. And I'm going to show you the, um, the sensor response from my hands on the screen. Now, if I use a standard technology, like the technology you would have in tablets and things like that, this would be a total mess. But in this case, if I put my hands on the screen, it's basically going to show me the footprint of my hand or the handprint of my hand. Uh, so it's, it's kind of uh, quite simple to understand what we see. We just see exactly what happens on the screen. Uh, and because the view is so simple, I'm sorry to use that word all the time, but because of, it's so simple, um, it's also easy to analyze. It's easy to extract information from that. And therefore, we can be very fast. But it is simple, but at the same time, the information contained here is quite complex because the API will not only give you information about this particular blob that's been detected, like its position and its size, it can also give you its shape. So the outline or even the complete uh, intensity uh, image of the blob. From there, you can do gesture recognition and other advanced tasks that are completely impossible with uh, a touchscreen that is not giving you true 2D sensor information. Um, with the image we've seen, the raw sensor data, once we've analyzed that, uh, we can use it here in a very, very simple drawing program. Okay, let's keep it simple. Um, and one thing, one advantage of this system is its accuracy. So if I put my finger on one location, it's really going to be under my finger. Now this is the center of the screen, so anybody can do that. But if I move to the edge, it's going to be the same. I, I'm, my eye is on top of my finger and I cannot see the dot until I remove my finger because it's obviously uh, obstructing. But this is also true for the corners. So in the corner here, the point is still exactly under my finger. Uh, same everywhere, actually. I can draw a line, and the line is going to be not perfectly straight, because I'm getting old, but uh, it's going to be quite straight. So this is a common problem you can have with uh, FTIR systems, um, because the calibration is not so accurate, you can't have that accuracy. But here, we can do it. Another aspect of this system uh, we've seen the accuracy, but something else is the speed. Because whenever you have to process a lot of information, uh, you end up with some processes that are very slow, uh, that have a huge lag, that take a lot of memory, processor resources, and it's a mess. But in this case, we've managed to do something really fast. Both for the detection, for the tracking, we run at over 110 hertz for the update of the, the multi-touch information. So if I draw something like that, it's not apparent, of course. But if I take two points and draw like that, I really want this to remain two colors. Because if it changes color, it means that my tracking failed. I could also do it like that, with line merging and the tracking, if it's too slow, is going, going to fail. But in this case, 
uh, you can see it works. In fact, I can go even, like, I can try to go faster, but, uh, and the, the color ideally should be five colors here and five colors there. If it's not five colors, then it means there's been a mistake, but I think it's correct. So because it's really fast, it's also accurate in the tracking. So you both have accuracy in the position, which is space, and then in tracking, which is time. So you have a reliable system. Um, that's kind of nice because usually um, these kind of devices are kind of experimental and they don't work well when you, you know, step on the boundary or go a bit too much left and right. This is really, uh, it's not bulletproof, uh, but it's almost, uh, it's almost like something like, it's, um, it's not bulletproof, that's it. <laughs> Um, and it survived an earthquake. So, um, an example of what we can do with this system, um, and that we couldn't do with another one, is to simply take, uh, I would use a business card to represent actually uh, a poker card, let's say it's the, the Ace of Spade, right? And uh, I'm going to put it on the screen here, going to erase the screen first. So we have a card and if you want to play poker, you don't want the other people to see your card. Now because it's a 2D thing, 2D uh, display, it's not going to work very well. Everybody's going to see what happens. So what you can do with this kind of technology is put your hand over the card. This will give you this kind of uh, handprint and then with actually quite basic software, you can recognize this pattern. Once you know that you have a hand over the card, and not something else because the pattern is actually quite specific, uh, you can move your hand like so to make a kind of wall in front of the, on the card so that the other people cannot see it. And the software can also see that because the pattern will become a line or a broken line. So if you detect these two steps, you can tell the software when you see this hand over the card, when the hand becomes vertical, you can flip the card and show it. And if the person removes the hand immediately, it's flipped back. So this is a kind of interaction that is truly impossible with other systems. You could mimic it. You could, for example, say, okay, there's a card. I'm going to suppose the user has a hand here and then I'm going to ask him to click it. But even so, because you have a hand right in front of your clicking point, some sensor will fail to detect that point. So it would be quite difficult to do. I won't say impossible because that would be a, um, going maybe a bit too far, but it would be really hard to do something natural with another system. So this is the kind of advanced interaction we can do. So we have basically one, thing, one picture per finger and if you have a fast system and you move your hands around it will not lose any pictures. If your system is not doing a proper tracking or is too slow pictures are going to be lost. And so I could try to do something like that. They're still all there. And the reaction is pretty fast. That's the kind of thing that's different from the competition or product. Another productivity application uh, where people want to discuss something around the table is not discussing about pictures but discussing about uh, written matter. And in this case, we have a scientific article. And uh, let's say that um, some committee asked me to review it. So I'm going to maybe gather with some colleagues and uh, look at the paper and see what, what we think about it. Um, With this system, I can, of course, show the article to, to anyone. I can zoom it and zoom it, uh, but that's not enough. So what I really want to do is write something on it, keep the note, and send it to my colleagues. That's kind of useful task we want to do in productivity. So I can double click here, pick a pen, and then start to write things on it, like this thing here. That's really bad, man. 
No way. Um, or mm, this thing here, I think it should be moved there. So you can make notes like this and save them, then check it again. Let's flip the pages and see what we have. The rest seems to be okay. It must be a pretty good article if there's only that to be changed. But if that's okay, I can send it to my colleagues through, I don't know, to my tablets or phones or whatever. Uh, inside this system is a standard computer, so you can send it with Wi-Fi, network, USB, anything you can imagine. So currently, uh, the hardware is basically a 46-inch uh, LCD display. Um, around which we wrap our technology for multi-touch and then we pack in the package uh, we had a computer um, fully fledged standard Intel computer um, on which you can run basically anything you want it's a standard Linux computer at the moment we could also make a Windows version uh, or even a Macintosh it would not be an issue so it's really standard things that people can program quickly with <laughs> This product is now reaching the, the product stage. Basically, it was a prototype before. Uh, and we are starting to produce it in our own factory. But we're a small company, so uh, we're now looking for a partner who would really mass produce it. But as soon as you move knowledge from one company to another, it takes time. You have to transfer everything. So uh, even if we will start the production on our site, probably next month or even this month, the, the mass production will really start only in um, autumn or something like that. Um, the product itself is not too difficult to build, uh, but you have to know how to do it. That's the key. Um, and uh, so the mass production will not be a huge problem. We don't have parts that are coming from Mars or made of unobtainium. It's just normal things. Uh, but um, putting them together uh, and transferring the knowledge, as I said, is going to take time. Uh, but I don't expect any problems uh, with that aspect. Uh, for the future, um, what I would really like to do is make it bigger and thinner and cheaper. Um, these things will happen and can happen, but there's always technical problems uh, and that's difficult to overcome yet. For example, if you make this, the screen much bigger, because the resolution is still Full HD, the pixel gets so big that you don't want to look at it from a close distance. So you need Quad HD. Now, do you, need, do you know many Quad HD TVs? Um, there are not many models for that. So we're kind of stuck from the point of view of hardware. We have to wait for the technology to basically catch up with our IDs. But there's lots of IDs.